Welcome to Thalos Cast Live Demo. I am so honored to be your host for this event. My name is Contessa, and I'm super thrilled to be here with each and every one of you. Today, we will have an incredible opportunity to explore the potential of carbon as a service, otherwise known as CAS. This webinar will provide you with insights into how CAS could revolutionize your business by seamlessly embedding verified carbon credits into your products and services. So get ready to deep dive into the world of CAS, ask questions using the Q&A function, and gain valuable insights into leveraging this ground breaking solution. Thank you once again for joining us and let's get started. Ryan. Thank you, Tessa. And hello, everyone. Now, Fellow started with a belief that the carbon markets must be revolutionized. We believe in carbon as an embedded tool in the quest against climate change. The way we do this is by ensuring that access to carbon is fair and transparent to both buyers and suppliers, and by offering market-wide choice available to all. Carbon as a service is the embodiment of this belief, and I'm really looking forward to unveiling it for all of you today. I'm Ryan Gledhill, I'm CEO of Fallow, and I'm genuinely thrilled to be here. I've got over 15 years of experience, my passion for building exceptional teams uh, and revolutionary products, especially within cap capital markets and blockchain has led to significant transformations in their respective industries. However, let me be the first to admit that the real stars of Ballot are the incredible individuals who make up our team. You'll have the opportunity to meet some of them during this webinar. Their impressive talents and expertise span across sustainability and technology, backed by a track record collaborations with esteemed names like Al Gore, Michael Bloomberg, Uber, McDonald's, London Stock Exchange, BlackRock, and many, many others. I truly believe we have the team to execute our bold vision. And my hope is that after today's webinar, you share my enthusiasm. Today, we'll introduce our flagship product, then uh, allow you a first-hand experience of its transformative potential. We'll wrap up with a comprehensive overview and a Q&A. Remember, your questions are pivotal to us. Don't hesitate to utilize the Q&A box during the presentation to share your thoughts and inquiries. At Fellow, our mission is clear, to pave the way for accessible climate solutions that encompass the entire carbon market. We do this in two ways. First, through our upcoming marketplace platform, you can make one-off purchases or sales, unlocking the potential of the carbon market with ease. But today, we'll cover our groundbreaking Carbon as a Service CAS product, which provides a single API solution, allowing businesses instantaneous access to millions of carbon credits from across the entire market. With CAS seam seamlessly integrating high quality verified carbon credits into your products and services becomes effortless and automated. Now, what really sets us apart is our technology which directly integrates with carbon registries across the market, ensuring a live and synchronous link to the issuing registry at all times. This real-time connectivity eliminates any possibility of double accounting, providing a transparent audit trail for issuance to retirement. Our reach extends far and wide already as we collaborate with over 200 project developers offering a diverse range of more than 30 million tons in spot credits. Further, our software allows purchasers to retire even micro amounts of carbon, as small as a gram at a time, aligning perfectly with your customers' purchasing habits. With CAST, you can turn every transaction into a climate action. Every customer checkout, we swipe, every invoice, every new client is an opportunity to tap into millions of verified carbon credits from carbon project developers around the world. Now, I suspect that many of you listening today are either considering a climate target yourself or have an existing policy. We know, for example, that four of every five large corporations have climate targets 
with the vast majority relying on carbon credits to hit them. We should really consider this as a step in the right direction as opposed to greenwashing. Recent research shows that companies that use material amounts of carbon credits actually decarbonize two times faster than those that aren't. There have undoubtedly been significant challenges impeding the progress of climate commitments, particularly within the voluntary carbon market. A critical concern at the forefront is the issue of uh, greenwashing, where carbon credits from certain projects may mislead purchasers with exaggerated or false environmental claims. This undermines the credibility of the entire market and hampers meaningful pro progress. More than many, we understand the obstacles businesses face when trying to provide carbon credits to their customers. Building and maintaining the necessary infrastructure is an expensive endeavor, often requiring a team of skilled developers and a budget of millions of dollars. This high cost becomes prohibitive for the majority of companies seeking to participate in climate initiatives. Additionally, intermediaries within the market have been known to extract excessive profits directly from suppliers, driving up the cost of credits and diverting crucial capital away from much needed supply projects. We hear a number of recurring questions from all of our customers. How can buyers determine if credits are fairly priced by suppliers? What defines the quality of these credits? The opacity across the current market makes it challenging for these buyers to make informed purchasing decisions, even if they possess the answers to these questions. And these questions have been instrumental when designing and building carbon as a service. At Fallow, we're committed to addressing these issues head on. By ensuring direct connections with carbon registries, we ensure transparency and reliability throughout the entire process with a one-click retirement process that retires directly on the registry. We believe in fair pricing and quality standards. Fallow is dedicated to removing value sapping intermediaries and providing direct access for project developers to sell into the market. This means a greater return for suppliers, which can in turn be reinvested into further carbon projects. Our goal is to dispel the opacity playing in the market, providing clear information and insights through our blockchain infrastructure so that buyers can confidently make purchasing decisions aligned with their values, price sensitivity, quality, and environmental goals. For economies of scale, we can offer a product that has taken us millions of dollars as well as an expert team to build and maintain for a fraction of that price. Our commitment to digital readiness has led us to collaborate with some of the largest registries in the market. We've been chosen as a pioneering digitization partner by Gold Standard and are actively supporting the integration processes for other esteemed registries, such as ACR, Biocarbon, Pure At Fellow, we envision carbon as a service not only as a groundbreaking solution for users, but also as a foundational and aspirational software piece for other innovators in the market. We have an obligation to prioritize the needs of all stakeholders, from supporting registries, placing the requirements of suppliers at the forefront. We also ensure our buyers and our integrators have access to the broadest choice, all streamlined with just a few lines of code. In essence, CAS represents a true revolution in the voluntary carbon market. CAS's design allows us to aggregate the entire market supply, working hand in hand with project developers and registries. These collaborations enable us to offer an extensive network, hundreds of supplier relationships, and tens of millions of carbon credits, all seamlessly accessible through this single API integration. The diagram here illustrates how our revolutionary product has the potential to provide exceptional value across a number of distinct industries. To mention but a few, e-commerce brands gain the power to immediately offer customers the option to offset their product purchases. They can either shoulder the cost themselves, addressing scope-free emissions, or create new revenue stream by extending this service to end clients. Likewise, other B2B service providers can immediately offer their downstream customers the option to offset emissions associated with their products and services. 
Consumer companies can track and offset their own internal emissions in a verified real-time. Manufacturers can move towards decarbonizing their scope-free emissions by giving their suppliers or end customers a way to easily offset their emissions. Sustainability uh, consultancies and carbon accounting firms can present their clients with a curated selection of carbon credit projects through their own branded marketplace with credits supplied from fellows, high quality project developer partners. Companies engaged in carbon trading can efficiently manage their portfolios in a single centralized platform equipped with an intuitive dashboard for secure accounting. Now let's delve a little deeper into a few of these use cases with demos developed alongside our customer requirements. E-commerce is a powerful example, allowing businesses to become a carbon neutral brand overnight, or at least offering their end, end customers the ultimate choice around whether to shop deal free. McKinsey and the market agree with 69% of consumers willing to pay more for a carbon neutral product. 51% of consumers are willing to pay more to companies that promote carbon neutrality. So let's dig in. We have a typical e-commerce business here, very on brand, selling carbon sequester implants. Let's follow a standard purchasing process that should be second nature to everyone on this call. Every business will have a steadily increasing subset of customers that choose to offset their carbon footprint across all aspects of their life, including through their purchasing habits. It's unrealistic to expect consumers to track and calculate their own carbon footprint so our e-commerce business here has already done this for them. They already have the data as to what each of their products cost in terms of carbon. So through directly integrating Valo, we can make this decision effortless for them. For those of you who don't have these calculations or this information ready to hand, Valo can help you with this through the onboarding process. Your business knows your customer better than anyone else, which is why Valo allows you to display the projects that your customers can choose from. You can even opt to make this decision for them, opting for just one or a sample of projects that best suit your brand with a simple opt-in button, rather than presenting the user with multiple choices. Choice is yours. Many of our customers might opt to support local projects only, or only show projects within a certain price range. Our API offers billions of permutations to filter the selection. So the choice is freely up to you. You'll see here, the emissions purchase has been added to the basket. All the customer needs to do now is pay and Fallow's API will handle the rest from purchasing the credit on your behalf through to the retirement on the underlying registry and everything in between. In this example, the emissions to offset are relatively high due to delivery costs and other calculated emissions. But in many cases, take for example, a, uh, a book purchased and downloaded onto, onto an e-reader might have emissions that are a fraction of the amount shown here. Carbon as a service handles this too, allowing retirements down to a single graph. So no matter the product, no matter the emission calculation, just plug in the data and let CAS handle the rest. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate something slightly more complex. The scenario here considers a sustainability consultancy that already offers carbon accounting for its own customers in turn. Scope one, two, and three emissions are commonly used to evaluate the overall carbon footprint and impact of an organization. Taking into account both direct and indirect emissions throughout its operations and value chain. We can see these pre-existing calculations on the dashboard, helpfully broken down into types of emissions on a monthly basis. Now this provides an invaluable insight into your company's emissions. But consider how an integration with carbon as a service can allow you to also offer carbon credits directly to your end customer so they can opt to offset as soon as these calculations are completed without ever leaving your platform. Again, the level of choice or information you offer to your customers is completely up to you. You already have the data you need to pre-populate the quantity your customer needs to purchase with a single click. But perhaps in some cases, your customers are highly knowledgeable and will prefer to make a fully informed decision for themselves. All of the information is available here, including SDGs, geographical area, and other information about the project. 
we truly believe that as, as companies continue to become more educated around the carbon market, that many will opt to choose projects that are important to them, whether local credits, avoidance or removal, recent vintages, or something else that might be crucial to their story. Lastly, and to really hammer home the point that carbon as a service can be used across markets, wherever a diverse credit supply is crucial. We've been approached by some of the world's biggest carbon marketplaces in order to be their underlying credit supplier. They see Thalo as the ideal underlying credit supplier, resolving a substantial supplier problem and putting an end to the fragmentation of supplier credits across various marketplaces. For these marketplaces, the choice is crystal clear. Through one seamless integration, Thalo, they gain access to the entirety of the carbon market supplier. This eliminates the need to manage dead stock and ensures they can offer their customers a diverse range of high quality carbon credits. Now suppliers too also find the choice equally straightforward. Why limit themselves to listing on a single marketplace when they can lever leverage Valo's infrastructure to access demand from multiple marketplaces simultaneously? By collaborating with Valo, suppliers can maximize their reach and expose their projects to a broader audience, unlocking greater opportunities for growth and impacts. For those that are technical on the call, our SDK or MPM package makes integration super simple, granting access to the entire carbon market with just a few lines of code. If you're less technically inclined, it's critical to understand that CAS is designed to be user-friendly and fully customizable. You can effortlessly set rules and preferences that align with your business requirements. It is even possible to save and customize preferences for each of your individual customers, ensuring a personalized experience that caters to their specific needs and preferences. For instance, if a customer operates out of South America, they can opt to view only credits from their local continent, or they might express a preference towards removals over avoidance credits and CAS can cater to that level of granularity. Simplifying the process for our clients has been a primary focus throughout the product's design. It truly is a one-click solution for the end customer as our API seamlessly handles all purchase and retirement requests, ensuring a hassle-free experience from beginning to end. Once a month, all your client purchases will be aggregated along with a list of retirements. An accompanying NFT certificate will be generated containing all of the relevant retirement metadata. This NFT can be shared on social media, directly with your customers, providing indisputable proof of, the, of their carbon offsets. Beyond the ease of integration, there's also the potential to drive new revenue streams for your business. By including a small handling fee, you can essentially negate the cost of integration, making it a free solution in just three lines. Now that we've covered the challenges in the market, we've covered the capabilities, carbon as a service, the vast range of credits it offers and its potential use cases, you may be eager to know what the next steps are. Our onboarding process is incredibly straightforward and tailored to meet your organization's specific needs. Your journey with us begins with meeting one of our subject matter experts. During this discussion, we'll delve into your organization's requirements, goals, and the preferences of your end customers. Using these requirements as a foundation, we'll then workshop through technical requirements alongside any development support you might need to integrate. If required, we can set up a testing environment to ensure everything operates flawlessly before going live. Once you're ready, all you have to do is sign our terms of use and direct your implementation towards the live system. And just like that, you'll have unlocked the power of carbon as a service for your business. From then on, you can benefit from on-demand support from our team of experts. Our success relies on your success. So we really will be working alongside you to ensure the implementation of carbon as a service is a success. We understand that different businesses have varying needs and support levels. We're committed to providing fl flexible pricing to ensure that carbon as a service is accessible and beneficial for all. It's now clear what carbon as a service is and how it can benefit your business. If you're looking for access to a wider carbon market that until now was out of reach, 
If you're looking for a partner to really understand and design to your requirements with a simple integration process. If you're looking for an overnight cost-effective solution to retain customers, build new revenue streams, or help solve your climate goals, then you're looking for Carbon as a Service. We look forward to working with you all. When I take it, any questions you might have, and please use the link posted in the chat to book your complimentary consultation call. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan, for that, all that wonderful information. I know that there are so many questions out there, but I want to start with this one first. And please remember that we also have Haley and Adam's here to help answer all of these wonderful questions. So first, we're going to start with the question from Max. And Haley, I'm going to direct this one towards you. Do you already partner or will partner in the future with Woodland Carbon Code and or the Peatland Code? Do you have your own ratings for projects or will you rely on Silvera or B0, et cetera? Yeah, great question. Thank you, Max. So we're not yet integrated with Woodland Carbon Code or Peatland Code. The two registries that we have already integrated with are Biocarbon Registry out of Latin America and Puro.Earth. But we are very much aiming for full market access. So we'd love to integrate with other registries as well. We have one new registry we'll be announcing in the next couple of weeks and then two more quickly after that. But we are definitely looking at Woodland Carbon Code. Um, and peatland code. And as long as they um, they meet our minimum standards, which are available on our website and which we evaluate each standard against um, with our sustainability advisor, then we're really excited and happy to, to do that integration. On the ratings front, we do not plan to do our own ratings. We think that Silvera and B0 and Calix are doing a great job on the ratings front. So while we do require everything meet our minimum standards, we are looking at integrating some ratings from some of these other ratings agencies into our platform. That will not be in the very first iteration, but it's something we're in conversation with them to do down the line. Thank you so much, Haley. Ryan, I have a question for you. How is this from like Patch or Cloverly or others? It's a really good question. I, I think from the very start, we always put our project developers first. Now, my understanding is that at Patch, you know, apologies, I haven't got this right, is that they buy credits up front from projects that they choose specifically. We really want our project developers to be able to choose their own pricing with the data that we provide them, with transparent data that, that we provide through the, the blockchain itself. As Haley said, as I've mentioned a few times, we also have the potential and the intention to offer whole of market supply. So we're moving towards that very quickly. And that allows our customers to choose the supplier that is useful to them or that fits their narrative or their customer journey. So for us, the difference between us and Patch is really all about choice. Choice for the project developers and choice for our customers. Thank you so much for that. I also have a question here for Adam. Can you explain exactly how blockchain is used? And what if we want our own wallets? Yeah, sure. So we use blockchain technology as basically an audit trail for all of the movement of the credits between the registry and our platform. But the reason that we chose blockchain is because it's, it's public, it's transparent, it's immutable and, and it's permanent. So, you know, we couldn't kind of turn our servers off and suddenly that data is not available. We can't go and adjust the data later on. So it's kind of a trustless way of everybody being able to make sure that the credits that are on our platform do actually map back to credits that exist on the underlying registries. And equally, when it comes to retirement, we love all of that data on the blockchain as well. Awesome. Awesome. And Haley, what does our supply of credits look like? Yeah, good question. So I think Ryan mentioned while he was presenting that we work with more than 200 project developers all around the world and have access to more than 30 million credits through those project developers. So it's really a wide selection, pretty much any type of carbon credit you're looking for, whether that's a, you know, $600 direct air capture credit, or if that's, you know, a sub $10 nature-based avoidance credit, that that's definitely within the network of providers that we work with. 
We do span removals credits and avoidance credits. We have projects that we work with in Latin America, North America, Africa, Asia, Europe, Oceania. We cover a whole host of different sustainable development goals that are met with the projects that we work with and different methodologies. And I talked a little bit earlier about which registries we're already integrated with. Puro Earth, which focuses on engineered carbon removals, and then biocarbon registry based out of Latin America, which tends to have more nature-based projects. But like I said, we're expecting to announce another three integrations over the next couple of weeks and months. So stay tuned on that front. But really, the answer is that we have a, a whole host of carbon credits really across different credit types. So if you want to talk more specifically about that, please do get in touch, follow the links in the chat to book your follow-up meeting, and we can talk about your specific business need. Awesome. And Ryan, I'm going to toss this one over to you. First of all, congratulations, Team Fellow. Last few weeks, I've been trying to understand this industry, which will be the future. Absolutely. How can I build businesses with your product? What is required for me and India? And how can this, how can a market be focused? It's a great question. And thank you for your kind words as well. So how, it really depends on what your business is. Who's the end customer? What are the emissions that are generated from your business, from your customer, from your manufacturers, and, and a number of other calculations that will need to occur. And really, we can help you from the start to the finish there. We can help you with calculations on how many emissions your business and your customers generate. We can help you with how and where to plug those into your product or service. And we can help you with the integration itself. But really, this question, I guess, is, you know, how long's a piece of string? It really all depends on the, on the underlying business and the underlying product and service. My suggestion would be to reach out to our team using the, the, the link in the chat. Uh, and our, our team will, will walk you through it. Thank you. We have another question here from Ryan Kim. Do you account for the carbon emissions from processing the blockchain algorithms? Is it a lot more carbon intensive than a simple credit card transaction? And Adam, I'm going to send this question over to you. Sure. Thanks. No, it's, it's a really good question because the carbon footprint between blockchains is enormously different. If you take Bitcoin, for example, versus something like Polygon, which is a blockchain that we use. I can't remember the exact number, but it's a tiny fraction per transaction. So we will only ever use blockchains where they have a low carbon footprint per transaction, because obviously that would be very counterintuitive to, to not do that. So it's a, it's a really good question. And we've made sure that we, we pick the right technology for that reason. And I, th I think that number is 99.95% less energy intensive than a proof of work blockchain. There you go. Exactly. Infinitely less intensive. And pr yeah, you're right. Proof of work and proof of stake is the terminology that we're looking for there. With proof of work, they do lots and lots of maths, basically, to come to consensus on the transactions, whereas proof of stake doesn't require that. It's much more akin to an ordinary, any electronic account system, basically. So yeah, like a credit card transaction, exactly. Such great information. There has been increasing skepticism towards the VCM regarding the average consumer and their interaction with CAS. Are there any studies, cases that were considered regarding consumer behavior towards individual carbon offsetting? Haley, you want to tackle this one? Yeah, happy to take this one. Thanks for the question. I, I will say first, absolutely, there has been some increasing skepticism towards the voluntary carbon market. We've seen it in the media. We've seen it um, in some criticisms of specific companies that have purchased carbon credits. We welcome this. We welcome this scrutiny. We think it's great that there are more people that care about the voluntary carbon market and that want to improve it and want to make sure that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do, which is get carbon financing to good projects that remove or reduce carbon in the atmosphere. So to answer the question, which is really about are there specific studies or cases that were considered around consumer behavior towards individual offsetting? We've heard different numbers in different places. I think Ryan mentioned a couple of them in, in his talk that 69% of consumers are willing to pay more for sustainable products and that 51% of consumers are willing to pay more to companies that promote things like carbon neutrality. And also that products that make ESG related claims have averaged higher growth over the last five-year period over those that didn't. 
So I would say the there's not one specific study that says exactly what we expect consumers to do, but there's reason to believe that there's a lot of consumer education happening, a lot of consumer awareness happening around more sustainable products. So I'll I'll drop a couple of those those resources into the chat so you can take a look at those. But I think the the point is that we we have good reason to believe that there are a lot of individuals that would be willing to offset or if that were an easy option available to them. Thank you so much for that, Haley. We have two more questions and I want to send this one over to Ryan. And you mentioned that you've already invested millions in a big team that works on this. Hence, there may be a big emissions trail that you would have plus the blockchain emissions. So choosing offsets via you has an additional footprint, right? Pulling no punches there, I like it. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good question to ask. So we're obviously committed, uh, as well as many of our clients. Every year, we offset the personal footprints of all of our staff. We also offset the server f- f- footprints of everything we do. And we will be offsetting the blockchain footprints of everything we do as well. I think even at one point, we offset an entire conference that we were talking at, which was, which was an interesting one. So we're super committed to this. There's no extra um, carbon footprint on top of what already exists. Awesome. We have a question here from Jamal. Will blue carbon credits be available? I'm going to say a really big yes, um, and there will definitely be an article coming out next week about blue carbon. Um, but I'm going to, you know, let Haley answer this further for you. Yes. So uh, we have a number of project developers we're working with that are in the blue carbon space. So we'll definitely have credits available from from them. And that includes both um, mangrove type projects. There, we, we are also talking to some ocean carbon sequestration projects and also some um, algal bloom remediation projects. So a lot of kind of water-based projects that would fall under the blue carbon umbrella, but absolutely. And as Contessa mentioned, we'll be releasing a blog post next week with some kind of spotlights on specific projects in the blue carbon space that we work with. Thank you so much. And then we have one last question. Can environmentally conscious individuals or HNI with big individual carbon footprints use your platform to set up their footprint? And who would like to tackle that one? Yeah, I'm happy to take this one. So definitely get in touch. Let's talk. We are currently organized for businesses to be able to to plug into the API, but um, we are also creating a pathway for individuals to be able to do that as well. So absolutely get in touch. Let's talk through what the specific need is. And even if you don't get in touch, that's something that's definitely on the roadmap for early next year, if not sooner. So please do reach out and let us know. Wonderful. One last question, and then we're going to wrap it up. Don't forget, we will be sending out a replay. So with Carpen as a service model gaining momentum, how does Thalo plan to collaborate with governments and policymakers like AIDA as of recent to accelerate the transition to a low carbon economy? Who'd like to grab that one? Yeah, I'm, ha- I'm happy to take this one too. So we think as players in the voluntary carbon market that we have a role and responsibility to improve the market overall. So that not only means creating good products on our end that we know that businesses and that individuals are looking for, but also engaging with those who are working on all of this at at a higher level. So Thalo is very involved with a a number of organizations working across the carbon market. You may know some of these. Aita was mentioned in the question, but we are fully engaging with kind of all of the processes. If there's an open comment process, for instance, we're always submitting our comments. Right now, that's the Beyond Value Chain Mitigation Consultation from the Science-Based Targets Initiative, for instance. We're also very closely following the work of VCMI, the Voluntary Carbon Markets Integrity Initiative, and their claims code of practice that they're working on, as well as the Integrity Council for Voluntary Carbon Markets, um, the ICVCM. There's, there's There's a lot of acronyms in this space. Uh, But so we're also following their work very closely on the core carbon principles, which really seek to set a floor for quality when it comes to uh, what is a carbon credit. 
Um, likewise, we will be on the ground in Dubai for COP28 later this year. We attended COP27 last year and were able to participate in some really good policy discussions. But we're really happy to be involved and, and contribute where we can. Ryan also mentioned that we're working with organizations like Gold Standard on their tokenization readiness phase. Similarly, they have an initiative to look at at some of that claims practice that can be done. So in terms of what businesses can say about having purchased certain types of carbon credits. So very, very involved, very engaged. If there are other working groups out there that you know of, we're happy to, to hop on and, and share our, the insight that we have. And to anyone who's working on those working groups, thank you, because they're very important. Those were some great questions. That is all the time that we have for our Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again for attending our Carbon as a Service live demo. We hope that you have gained valuable insights into how CAS can empower your business and turn every transaction into climate action. We encourage you to reach out to our team for any further information or assistance. Together, let's continue making a positive impact on the environment and creating a better world through the power of carbon as a service. Once again, thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Take care now. Bye.